after John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Come after me, and I will make you fishers of men. Then they abandoned their nets and followed him. He walked along a little farther and saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in a boat, mending, mending their nets. Then he called them. So they left their father Zebedee in the boat, along with hired men, and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Everybody and their donkey repented. Yes, the Ninevites, all of them repented. But there is a fascinating detail that unfortunately is left out of uh, uh, the first reading today, which I encourage you to read, actually read uh, the whole book of Jonah. It's one of the shortest books in the Bible, and uh, it is it's truly magnificent. And, uh, and so the detail that is left out is that even the animals uh, made penance. Even uh, the animals had to wear sackcloth and ashes. And so the decree of the king read that every single man and woman, every child, and every donkey and every cow should do penance. According to some commentators uh, of, of, uh, of Jonah, that was meant to be uh, like a coming relief, uh, to make you laugh a little bit. But it also shows a really important truth about human nature. My friends, you and I are stubborn as mules. Yes, we are. We are stubborn. And realize that as Jesus begins his ministry, his first message, his very first word is very simple, but very clear. Repent. Repent and believe in the gospel. That is the beginning of the Christian journey. And we should go back to that first beginning of the journey time and again. We must repent and uh, believe in the gospel. In the last year, year and a half, there was a study that came out, and the study was about Catholics and the Eucharist. And uh, the goal of the study was uh, you know, very, uh, very pointed. Do Catholics believe that Christ Jesus is fully present in the Eucharist, in his body and blood, soul and divinity? Do Catholics truly believe that the Son of God comes down from heaven and remains with us in the Eucharist, in his body and blood, soul and divinity? And the results were shocking. I, I didn't do my homework, so I didn't go to, you know, to, to, uh, to see the actual results of, uh, uh, of the study. Uh, but it was something around uh, 30 or 40 percent max. Just think about that. Only 30 or 40 percent of Catholics in this country believe that Christ, our Lord and Savior, is fully present in his body and blood, soul and divinity in the most holy sacrament of the altar. And so the call for us Catholics in America is very clear. We must repent and believe in the gospel. We must repent and believe that Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, is truly present in the Eucharist. There was a time in history 
uh, when animals led the way. Yes, there was a time in history when animals led the way in showing that Christ was fully present in the Eucharist. There's a, an amazing story in the life of St. Anthony of Padua, one of the greatest preachers uh, in the history of the church. And uh, St. Anthony uh, arrived uh, in the town of Rimini in Italy. And uh, he had the mission given to him by St. Francis uh, to preach to these people, to these Catholics, who have relinquished faith in the Eucharist. They no longer believed that Christ was fully present in the Eucharist. This is nothing new. We can't have been strong, strong with the mystery of faith for a long time. So this was in the 13th century. And so St. Anthony realized that these people were really, really stubborn. They did not believe and they did not want to listen. One of the leaders of the people, by uh, the name of Juan Nilo, uh, he, uh, by you know, uh, the few details that we know about him, uh, he, he was uh, rather overbearing and uh, aggressive and not a you know, very nice person. And, uh, and he led the way in unbelief. If he realized that someone was starting to show signs that he had faith in the Eucharist, he would persecute that person, make fun of him, and make sure that he had a really hard time holding down to uh, faith in the Eucharist. When St. Anthony came and started preaching the gospel, people flocked to him. He was a saint, and he was one of the greatest preachers in the history of the church. So it makes sense that people wanted to listen to him. But then, time and again, Bonornillo would just come and just stand at, at you know, the very back of the crowd without saying a word. And as soon as people realized that he was around, they would just run away. That was the type of power that this man had. So we could truly say that Bonornillo uh, uh, was as stubborn as him. Let's do this. If your mule adores the Eucharist, then you should repent and believe that Christ is truly present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. And so one of thought, oh, that's so easy. This man is so stupid. Of course. But we will do it. We will do the trial, so to speak. In, in the main square, and I want everyone to be around. And then I want my mule not to eat anything for three days. And so we'll have palke in the middle of the town square, and then you will stand on you know, the opposite side of the, of the, of the, of the palke uh, with your Eucharist and see what the mule does. Bonalilo was convinced that the mule would just rush to the palke and gorge him. But St. Anthony knew better. And so on, on the day of uh, this uh, uh, great uh, uh, trial, everyone gathered in uh, the town square, and there was a huge bowed head, and then St. Anthony came out with the monstrance, with the Eucharist, with Jesus to only pass him to know that's a sacrament. And as soon as Bonomilo released his mule, the mule bolted, not to the pile of hay, but to St. Anthony, and bending his front legs, adored the Eucharist. This is a true story. Bonomilo repented, and with him, the entire town. My friends, the Eucharist is the heart of the matter. The Eucharist is the real presence of Christ in his body and blood, soul and divinity. Council Vatican II teaches to us that the Eucharist makes the church and the church makes the Eucharist. 
The Eucharist is at the heart of our Catholic faith. And we must repent and believe in the Gospel. For it is in the Eucharist that Christ Jesus fulfills his promise at the end of the Gospel of Matthew to remain with us until the end of the world. Realize that in the beautiful account of Mark's today, of the beginning of Jesus' ministry, we find combined together in a very harmonic and beautiful way the first uh, homily of Jesus, his first uh, teaching, and also the first calling of the apostles combined together. And so Jesus saw Simon and his brother Andrew, and he said to them, follow me. And they did. And then, walking, up, walking a lot a little farther, he saw James and his brother John, along with his father, and he called them. And they left his father and followed after him immediately. We know the story even by heart. And we have lost a sense of wonder of what's going on in here. St. Jerome, in a magnificent way, meditates upon what's going on here. And so he says, There must have been something divinely compelling in the face of the Savior. Otherwise, they would not have acted so irrationally as to follow a man whom they had never seen before. Does one leave a father to follow a man in whom he sees nothing more than he sees in his own father? They left their father of the flesh to follow the father of the spirit. They did not leave a father. They found out the father there was something divine there in the Savior's very countenance that men, seeing, could not resist. There was something divine there in the Savior's most beautiful face that those who saw, it, saw him could not resist. The Lord Jesus comes to us in the Eucharist today. He comes down from heaven to become the bread of life for us. In his tremendous humility and infinite love for humanity, he hides himself in the species of bread and wine that after the consecration are no longer such. But truly, the body and blood, soul and divinity of the Son of the Father, Christ Jesus, the Savior of the world. My friends, do we truly believe that Christ Jesus is truly present in the most holy sacrament of the altar? Do we truly believe? that the Eucharist is the mystery of our faith? Are we ready to lay down our lives for Christ in the Eucharist? I finished my homily today by relating the story of St. Tercius, a Roman boy at the time of one of the Roman persecutions. A young boy, perhaps 10 or 12 years of age, who had a tremendous love for Christ in the Eucharist. One day, this boy was entrusted uh, with the consecrated hosts. The priest knew that he was a young man of faith and that he could trust him with the Eucharist. Either to take him to the sick or to take him to a place where the Eucharist was uh, to be kept safely. But lo and behold, on his way uh, to his destination, 
he was surrounded by a mob, probably of young boys like himself. He started bullying him. Show us what you have there. And he wouldn't. And they start pushing him around and it got so bad that they started beating him off. Because he was so stubborn in not letting go of what he had. He was beat up to death. But he did not relinquish the Eucharist. He was willing to die rather than to allow the Eucharist to be desecrated. My friends, let us repent and believe in the gospel. Let us beg the Lord for true faith in the Eucharist. To love Christ in the Eucharist in such a powerful way. But yes, we're even willing to die rather than to offend the Lord who is truly present in his body and blood, soul and divinity, in the most holy sacrament of the altar.